Okay, today we're going to be exploring two-way tables, and we're going to see how we can construct and interpret the two-way tables. We know that a frequency is the number of times an event occurs, and a two-way table will show the frequencies of data that is categorized two ways. The rows indicate one categorization, and the columns indicate another. So let's look at the first example. A poll of 120 residents found that 40% own a bike. Of those who own a bike, 75% shop at the town's farmer's market. Of those who do not own a bike, 25% shop at the town's farmer's market. So starting with A, it says start in the bottom right cell, right here where it says total and enter the total of the number of people pulled. So we have 120 people pulled. We put that right here. Fill in the right column. So we know that 40% of those pulled own a bike. So 40% of 120, right, point 4 oh, times 120 is 48. So this number is 48. And then we also know then if 40% own a bike, 60% do not own a bike, but we could also use subtraction. So 120 minus the 48 gives us the last number of 72. Now we have some information. We know that the total number of people owning a bike is 48. The total number of people not owning a bike is 72. Okay, continue to fill out your table. So we know that if we fill in the top row, that 75% of those who own a bike also shop at the market. So 75% of 48 is going to be 36. The remaining bike owners do not shop at the, shop at the market. The number of bike owners who do not shop at the market is 12. Fill in the second row. 25% of those who do not own a bike shop at the market. So 25% of 72 is 18. The remaining people without bikes do not shop at the market. The remaining people would be equal to 54. And then you fill in the last row by adding the numbers in the first two rows to find the total number of people who shop at the farmers market and do not shop at the farmers market. So by now you should have the table completely filled out and you can see that 36 and 18 is equal to 54, which is the total. 12 and 54 is equal to 66. 66 plus 54 equals our 120, so we can check that out. We already know that this is 48 and 72. So it wants to know what percent of all the residents pulled shop at the farmer's market. Well, since that number is 54 over 120, it's about 45%. And how can we check that we filled it out correctly? Well, the last number in each row or column will be the sum of the other numbers in the rows or columns. Okay, so we talked about the frequency 
being the number of times an event occurs. Now we're going to talk about a relative frequency. The relative fre frequency is the ratio of the number of times something occurs to the total number of events. So the relative frequency of bike owners who shop at the market is 36 to 120 or 30%. You can use the relative frequencies to decide if there's an association between two events. Okay, so we have 100 teens that are polled about whether they are required to do chores and whether they have a curfew. If there is there an association between having a curfew and having to do chores? So the table's already filled out for us. So let's look at these relative frequencies. What's the relative frequency of having to do chores? You look at the total number of those that have to do chores. I'm going to put that over the total number of students. So we get 20%. Find the relative frequency of having to do chores among those who have a curfew. So in this case, we're using the total of people that have a curfew, and we want the number who have to do chores, which is 16 or 50%. So now let's compare them. So find comparing the um, relative frequencies of those that have to do chores, 20% of the total, to the ones that have to do um, chores that also have a curfew, and you see that there is a correlation. Um, there is an association between those students. Because students who have a curfew are more likely to have to do chores than the general population. So is there an association between them? Yes. The relative frequencies show that having a curfew makes it more likely that a student will have to do chores because 50% is greater than 20%. So, the relative frequency show that having a curfew makes it more likely that a student will have to do chores. That kind of makes sense. If your parents have rules and they're kind of strict and you have curfews, then more than likely you have to help out around the house as well. Okay, so let's look at the data from the 200 flights. It's categorized as domestic or international. And <clears throat> whether it is late or not late. And we want to know, is there an association between international flights and a flight being late? So we want to look at the relative frequency of flights being late. So the total number of flights being late and compare that to the total number of flights. So we would have the 40 out of 200 or 20 percent and then the number of international flights that are late to the total of international flights is also 20 percent. So let's compare them. Are international flights less likely, equally likely, or more likely to be late than flights in general? And the answer is equally likely. So there is no association between the relative frequencies and they're just as likely to be late as any other flight. So if we had to compare the relative frequencies of having a curfew and having chores to the relative frequency of not having a curfew and having to do chores, does this comparison help you draw a conclusion about whether there is an association? And what 
we know is that having a curfew and do chores, so curfew plus chores relative frequency equals 50%, and not having a curfew, no curfew, but having to do chores equals, oops, um, 6%, I'm going back to that table um, in example two. So yes, there is an association. There's enough of a difference that you'll be able to tell something about that information. So then compare the relative frequencies of a domestic flight being late to the relative frequency of an international flight being late and do they help you draw a conclusion? Well, they are both equal to 20%. So no association, which means no, they're not very helpful in trying to give us information or tell if there's an association between them.